Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the 1987 Supermod. I'm your host, as always, Brad Drake, and this is my AWA save. Today, ladies and gentlemen, the AWA is traveling to Denver, Colorado for a big live event tour. This one just happens to be tour date number 105. Let's get to setting our venue. <laughs> All right, we're in the Mid-South for Colorado, yes, and we are expecting 7,000 fans. The Odium gives us 6,500. We are booking the Odium. Let's check out our backstage incidents. This is all protege work here. And we are through it. Oh, for those of you that haven't noticed, um, Tom Benninghouse, the wrestler, he actually, I found out that he actually wrestled as Tom Bennett in the AWA, and I was able to find an appropriate, an age-appropriate picture for him for the time. So that's what Tom Benninghouse looked like in the AWA in 1987 as Tom Bennett. So I got that, uh, got that corrected. So I did that, did some research, was watching some old videos, and came across that and made the change. So let's see who's absent. If it's going to affect us, and it certainly doesn't look like it's going to affect us, so we are good to go. All right, let's check out our card for tonight. Medusa Michelli is going to wrestle Vivian Vachon. Cactus Jack and Buddy Wolf will face the Assassin and Steve Olsonowski. Mike Graham is going to face Alan West. And folks, we're going to make this correction right here and right now. Mike Graham is not going to face Alan West. Mike Graham is going to face Nelson Royal. And we are going to find Alan West a new opponent. And Alan West is going to face Wayne Bloom. Wayne Bloom is going to get some work that way. It's probably not going to be the best of scores, but uh, we'll give it a shot. So, Wayne Bloom is going to face Alan West. Mike Graham is going to challenge Nelson Royal for the World Light Heavyweight Championship. The terrorist, Jack Victory, is going to face Greg Gagne. Dick Slater is climbing in the ring against Wahoo McDaniel. The Guerrero Brothers are going to face Rose and Summers. And in our main event, Scott Hall battles Larry Zabisco. Let's get to booking. All right, Michelli versus Vashan. In our opener, we will do our usual and take a look and see if anybody's getting ahead of anybody else. Of course, both these women are showing still are still showing chilly momentum. We're not quite going to be able to fix that until we split them apart. So let's take a look here at the match history. Vivian Vashan got the win last time, so. Medusa Michelli is going to go ahead and get the win this time. There we go. That one's complete. 10 minute bout. Moving right along. Cactus Jack and Buddy Wolf versus the Assassin and Steve Olsonowski. That's a 12 minute bout. And I'm pretty certain that we put both teams in here. And we did. We're going to go ahead and leave this one open-ended. It doesn't really matter to me who wins here. All right, Wayne Bloom, the newcomer Wayne Bloom, is going to face Alan West. Remember, we just signed Wayne Bloom not too long ago. Wayne Bloom at this point is a young guy, big guy, powerful guy, a lot of potential. He's just brand new. So there's Alan West. We're going to book this one. We're also going to leave this one open-ended. It doesn't matter at this point who wins. Mike Graham versus Nelson Royal. If you remember a couple episodes back, we did a test run with these two in a spot show, and they got a decent number. So we'll see how they do in a bigger venue here. And lucky for us, Mike Graham was available. Mike Graham will become permanently available soon 
when Championship Wrestling from Florida is shut down by its parent company, Jim Crockett Promotions. Yes, 14-minute match. Just want to double-check. We're going to have Nelson Royal win, and of course it's going to be a tainted win. So there we go. That one's booked out. And the Terrorist versus Greg Gagne. And of course, you already know who's winning this one. And, of course, Jack Victor will be tired because he's doing all those shots in Texas. I think he might also be in the Mid-South Territory at this point. No, he's wrestling for Wild West and World Class. That's what's doing him in. That is what's doing him in. That's a lot of matches. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll put Greg Gagne in here. And, of course, Greg Gagne is going to get the win here. If you get the chance, I know I plugged it last show. I'm going to plug, plug it again. AWA Unleashed on YouTube. It is an excellent show with George Shire, sorry, George Shire, Mick Karch, and another guy hosting. And they talk about classic AWA. And George Shire, of course, is a historian. He's written several books. He helped write the record books on the AWA from the 60s and 70s, and the show is terrific. And they actually talked at length about Greg Gagne on one of the episodes and how they pretty much have the same opinions that I had, that Greg Gagne was a good wrestler. He just had two things going against him. He didn't have a great body, and his last name was Gagne. Besides that, Greg Gagne was a terrific, fantastic wrestler. All right, Dick Slater is going to face Wahoo McDaniel here. We are not going to make this a strap match. It's just going to be a regular match. Uh, next time these two face, maybe we will have another strap match. But uh, we'll see when that happens. Because remember, when you say S-T-R-A-P, it has to be strap. You have to yell it out to let everybody know that it's an Indian strap match. See how that goes? That means business when you say it that way. All right. Here is Wahoo. And let's take a peek and let's see who won the last one here. So Dick Slater won the last one. So Wahoo's going to go over this time. There we go. And our semi-main event is going to be the Guerrero Brothers versus Rose and Summers. I think the last time these two teams met, we did a six-man tag. That's not necessary this time in Colorado. And there is Rosen Summers. And here is Chavo. And Hector. It is booked. Let's take a look and see who won the last time. I'm pretty sure Rosen Summers won the last time. Uh, no, it was actually the Guerrero brothers. So Rose and Summers are going to get the win. No, no need to make it cheating. Um, these are good enough matches. It's it's not necessary. Uh, and in our main event, we're going to have Scott Hall versus Larry Zabisco. I don't see any reason to make it a gimmick. What we will pay attention to is who won the last time these two faced each other. We're going to go 30 minutes with these two. They're putting on some outstanding matches. So there's Scott Hall. And there is Larry Zabisco right here. And let's see who won the last time. Scott Hall won the last time. So we are going to have Larry Zabisco go over this time. And check this out, folks. I know we've done it before. We're going to do it again. And we're going to have outside interference from none other than Nick Bockwinkle. There it is. And there is Nick Bockwinkle. We're looking for him. We're going to find him here. There he is. So there we go. This is a nice surprise for Denver. This is a hot main event. 
This is a very good main event. We're at our usual two hours and 22 minutes. Let's go ahead and let's start this show. All right, Medusa gets the win with that nice German suplex. This is a good, sto good score for a ladies match. 47 overall, excellent. Hey, this one got a nice surprising score here. The Assassin gets the win over Cactus Jack with the Assassin lock and a 61 overall. Very nice. Is Buddy Wolf showing his age yet? He is. But the Assassin is not, so that's cool. That's a nice score for a second match. Followed up by an awful score, but Alan West gets the win over Wayne Bloom. This is Wayne Bloom's first appearance in the Mid-South region, so it's understandable. All right, Mike Graham and Nelson Royal. And unfortunately, this is not as good of a score as we wanted. Nelson Royal must be lacking in the Mid-South region. I'm sure that's the cause. It also doesn't help that he is penalized because of his age. So, uh, But 66 isn't bad. It can only be improved on. So let's continue. 56 overall. Greg Gagne only gets a 53 in Denver. Something's not right here, folks. Um, we're going to make a note. And we're going to check Greg Gagne's popularity in Mid-South. Because let me tell you something. Gagne was over in Denver. Greg Gagne was over in Denver. This isn't right. So let's move right along here and let's hope we can save the card. Nice. That's a nice score. I was hoping for a little bit more, but that's okay. Wahoo McDaniel gets the win with the Tomahawk Chop. Dick Slater looks like a million dollars through your score in an 85. I don't think Slater's showing his age, but Wahoo is. So Wahoo's almost 50 years old here. He's 48 or 49. So that's understandable. But that helps us out. Let's see what our semi main event. Nice score. That is a Big, big score, and exactly what we needed. And it's probably going to outscore the main event. Terrific. This is a terrific score. Good. Hey, the Guerreros are, are over when it's out west. So, nice. This has turned out to be a nice pairing with these two teams. Let's see what our main event can do. I doubt we're going to top that 91, but you never know. Let's see. Whoa! Ho -ho! Whoa, I'm a fool. 91 for that main event. Very nice. And uh, how terrific to have the Nick Bockwinkle running. This is a great score between these two wrestlers. Even Scott Hall hit an 85 here. Terrific. Terrific score. Excellent. The feud continues. That red hot feud. This is really good stuff. I am very pleased with these last two matches. This should definitely increase the overall. And it does. 88 overall on that on that card. Terrific. We got to give some praise to Scott Hall here. We got to give some praise to Larry Zabisco. And I'd also like to point out Chavo Guerrero. And speaking of Chavo Guerrero, I think we got a better picture of him that uh, we need to plug in there. He's looking very heelish in that picture with uh, the black hat and all that. So we'll take a look at it. All right, Scott Hall is pleased. Larry Zabisco is pleased. And Chavo is pleased. Excellent. All right, let's go ahead and make our adjustment for our next show, which is going to be 106. Live event number 106. When we hit January, folks, which isn't too far away, we will delete all the shows and start all over from one so things line up properly. Of course, we're going to keep our episode count, but that's what we're going to do for the um, for the shows themselves. So check out that fancy logo. I was able to find that old Giant Series logo from the 80s. Very nice. And uh, good stuff. Lex Luger's got a catchphrase in 87. No way. Lex Luger would give the most boring, awful promos and do that stupid thing where he pointed his hand. Ugh. That's uh, this is a little far-fetched here, but this seems to be the way this save is going. There's a lot of catchphrases and a lot of stuff going on here. So let's check our incoming mail here. Ooh, we are at professional level, level for merchandise, folks. 
This is big for us. This is really big. So we're going to have to go in there. 1.6, almost 1.7 million viewers on ESPN. That's also terrific. Great. We are firing on all cylinders here. Let's go in there. And let's take a look at our merchandise. So there we go. And we are going to continue our upgrade. And we're going to continue upgrading at a rapid fashion. So we are at professional right now. So we are probably going to increase our amount of money off of merchandise heavily here. Heavily. This will increase. Excellent. Good for us. Helps us continue to grow. And again, is not unrealistic. Now let's take a look at Chavo and see if we can't get him a more baby-faced look. I can't remember if it's him or Mondo that I found a picture with a white hat and went ahead and plugged it in. And of course, there it is. There's the white hat. That's very baby face looking there. So we're using that picture now. <laughs> no, it doesn't need to be an alter ego. It just gives us a baby face looking Chavo. Terrific. I think Chavo, he had the world light heavyweight. Yeah. He didn't have the... Um, of course, Chavo and Hector, for those of you that are playing, I'll go ahead and bring it back up. Those of you that are playing 7.0, you got all his LA and California titles and all that in there. And um, obviously that's not in the version I'm playing. I'm still playing 6.0. So Chavo, I, I think, was a 45-time tag team champion there for the LaBelle territory of the NWA, NWA Hollywood. Um, of course, all those titles aren't in here. So, of course, his brother Hector at this time, Hector was in Jim Crockett Promotions and was Lasertron and had some success with teaming with Jimmy Valiant. He also won the NWA World Junior Heavyweight title, and it was pretty exciting times for Hector Guerrero. So these are all our enhancement guys getting ready to debut, and they will soon enough, next TV taping, we're going to use a some of them, and get it going for them. And I'll show you. I'll go through this right while we're here. Why not? Um, let's take a look at Greg Gagne's popularity in the Mid-South region. Because that's just not right. He was he was over. So you can see how high his, he, he's really over in the Midwest and the Great Lakes. And then all of a sudden here in Mid-South, he's a 41. That's not accurate. He was over in Mid-South. We're bumping him up to 70. So you can consider it cheating all you want. I consider it realistic. So he was over in the Mid-South, especially in Denver. Let's take a look and see what's going around the game world here. Demolition over the Killer Bees in a main event. Solid. Nothing else too much a note there. Saturday night's main event. Ricky Steamboat in the main event over Hercules. Still. No Hulk Hogan, which is a little strange. Bulldogs over Demolition, nice. Ted DiBiase over Coco Beware in a cage match. It's a little extreme, but hey, whatever it takes. Six-man tag there, Patera and the Rujos versus Butch Reed and the Samoans. This is a nice card. This is a really nice card. I can see why I got a 93 overall. And look, only 18 million people viewed it. And of course, as I told you before, you know, the flaw is Saturday night's main event is running weekly instead of quarterly, as how it really ran. And there's not too many ways around that, as we've discussed before. I would like to see Grey Dog Software reprogram this game to where specials could get their own television contract, or you could do a television contract strictly for separate events. Um, that would be a really nice feature. That would help us to make things more realistic. But again, as we've talked about time and time and time again, TEW 2020 is not designed for 1987. It is designed for modern day episodic television wrestling. So that's the difference. That's the problem. Let's take a look at the WWF's live event. Rick Rude over Nikita Koloff. 
for the Intercontinental Heavyweight title. And the rest tend to be squash matches. So, all right, what are you going to do? Still scores an 86 overall. That one was out of the garden, the Boston Garden. There's Giants series for all Japan. A lot of titles on the line, including the World Junior Heavyweight title. Nice. It's about another year before All Japan will drop out of the NWA and drop their titles. But uh, we'll do it just like we did for uh, CWA. Just like I showed you how we did that one, we'll do the same thing for All Japan. So, all right, folks, I think that closes us out here for this one. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please give us a like. Please share our videos. And last but definitely not least, please subscribe. Help us to continue to grow. We have grown quite a bit in our 50-some videos, and I ask you to help us keep it going. If you would like to join us on Facebook to talk about the 1987 Supermod, you can find us at facebook.com slash groups slash 1987 Supermod. That's facebook.com slash groups slash 1987 Supermod. And last but not least, what we always say every one of these shows, So long for now. Had you there, didn't I?